Got a little bit sanctified there at the end. Sorry about that. Zach of all singer, songwriter, guitar player extraordinaire. Links down below to the Instagram, the Spotify, the Yammy Yams, the Jammy Jams, the Planny Plans, whatever you kids are listening to on music or following your favorite uh, guitar heroes, as it were. That is where I can be found. Uh, today, I want to talk to you a little bit about rhythm guitar uh, in a worship setting if you're playing on your church's worship team. Um, the art of comping. Um, so what is comping? Comping is a term uh, jazz cats came up with, uh, short for accompanying or complementing. So what we're talking about today is a bit more rhythm guitar focused, um, but how to comp or complement uh, whatever your keyboardist is doing, uh, your singers are doing, really just how to kind of function uh, in a band setting, in a worship band setting, um, and look like you know what you're doing and um, kind of stand out, but also not draw too much attention away from whatever the main focus is, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm gonna break it down to you over a very simple chord progression. It's gonna be a one, uh, um, five, six, four uh, progression in the key of A. So that's gonna be um, A, E, F sharp minor, and D. Um, pick that progression one, cause I like it two, uh, a lot of um, praise and worship songs use that chord progression there, and there's just enough chords in it to kind of help um, illustrate in, um, some of the concepts I want to talk to you about. Um, I've taught comping uh, on uh, blues comping before, um, but never really taught worship comping, and it doesn't seem like here on the intergoogles there's a whole lot of uh, good tutorials. On, on, on comping and how to kind of spruce up some of your rhythm playing there so it's not, you know, just chugging chords or anything like that. Not that this is bad. But we want to, you know, um, still sound good while we are praising the Lord. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in, get a better view of the, the fretboard here, and I'll walk you through some uh, three or four kind of basic concepts there to kind of help um, spruce up your rhythm guitar playing while you're at church. Can you dig it? Here we are now. It's a close-up. A guitar and some random guy. Okay, so all kidding aside, we're gonna break down a couple of concepts here to help you understand comping. First and foremost, on the floor here, I have a boost into a drive and a delay for a little bit of girth and majesty, as it were. Can you dig it? Um, so, um, instead of just playing those open, you know, those cowboy positions, um, what I, the first thing, um, or at least the first thing I kind of developed as a guitar player here, um, was switching the voicings of my chord, and that's really kind of, uh, the crux of, uh, good comping in a worship, uh, setting is, is not being afraid to play with your chord voicings. So I'm here, um, 7th, 6th, and 5th fret using A, uh, C sharp, and E for that A, just root position, uh, then first inversion E chord. So that's G sharp, B, and then E. Then taking that same kind of concept here, moving it up one, two frets. And then Adding Mr. Middle Finger, oh. D, uh, third fret, B string to get that root. So all together you have it makes for smooth voice leading as well because you're just traveling along that D string. Uh, voice leading again at first. I guess I should explain that real quickly. It's just dealing with the smooth uh, transition between chords. Is what that means. So, and it's pretty smooth because you don't have to really worry about, you know, the biggest thing you're worrying about there is just moving a few fingers here and there. Um, but again, we're not really wanting to chug a lug uh, along with the acoustic guitar player. The goal is to stand out but also support uh, your singers, your drummers, your keys, whatever's going on there. So, um, the first uh, thing you can do is usually what I did back when I was a, a young rapscallion of... 16, 17 years old playing guitar in the youth group worship band is, I would arpeggiate. I am high. 
hybrid picking. It's something I, I kind of do, but you could just, you know, with the plectrum there. So what does that sound like with the backing? Demonstration. Started off a little fast there, but hey, who doesn't make a mistake here and there? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Similarly, all will fall short of the note that you are trying to play. Can you dig it? This is my testimony. So, um, again, you can just arpeggiate there. You can swell. Super hip, especially if you're doing a play behind or it's communion or something like that. Swelling, good and ambience, ambiance is the word I would use. Uh, swelling is not a bad thing to have in your toolbox, in your arsenal, uh, in your weaponry, your armory for um, uh, jamming along on the worship times. Okay, so moving right along, a uh, similar concept, but this is what I'm more prone to do in this type of situation. Again, comping is really just going to depend on the backing, right? The chord progression, who's all on team if you have a bass player, keys, vocalists, how many vocalists you have, their vocal ranges and things like that. This is just, you know, giving you a place to start from, to kind of, a framework to kind of play with. So, um, lots of times, that being said, what I'll do is I'll switch up to this octave here. In this voicing again, this is going to be that first inversion A chord here. Uh, we have Mr. Ring Finger on the 11th fret playing that C sharp, the major third of A. Then we have Mr. Pointy Finger on the fifth E, Mr. Middle Finger uh, hitting that A on the 10th fret. And then for the E chord, we're going into this, should be a familiar shape because it's literally just an A. Um, and for this voicing here, I'm taking Mr. Pointed Finger and barring across the 9th fret. Because what that is, is it's going to give you that 5th, that the root, and the major 3rd. And then I'm taking Mr. Pinky. You could do it with your ring finger if you're so inclined. Uh, but I went uh, as a young rapscallion about the time I started playing on the worship team at youth group. Uh, I was jamming along to Eddie Van Halen, so I'm not afraid to use that pinky. And then F sharp minor, that voicing here, is just taking an A minor here, so that A minor grip, bringing it up here to the 11th fret, Mr. Middle Finger on the 11th fret, Mr. Ring Finger down below, and pointy pointy index finger on that A. Again, an inversion. Um, so, now there are two choices that you have, two choices that you have, for uh, the four chord here, for D. You can go that F shape again, kind of like we were doing here with A. We're sliding it up to uh, Mr. 12th fret here and going that route. Or you can stick, go back from that F sharp minor here to that long A shape. I call it the long A because that's just how I was taught back when I was learning fingerstyle blues and, and ragtime guitar. And that's how I taught it. Um, and then going back here, to Mr. 7th fret and making that same shape. So all together that's pretty straightforward there. And I mean again you could also take this uh, based off again that A shape of that E chord here. Um, but just for matters of convenience and then also in the opportunity or uh, in the event that you are the only guitar player on team and you're mixing um, lead and rhythm parts. Um, this, I find, gives me a bit more versatility because my skills right there for A um, and different patterns as well. So, but that's a different lesson we can get into later on. For now, we're focusing on comping. So again, swelling. Not a bad option, especially with those voicings. So there's something about when you're swelling there. And I'm using my volume knob to swell because I went to the Roy Buchanan School of Volume Swells, the Eddie Van Halen School of Volume Swells. Check those guys out for more 
uh, swelling in a knot, so uh, Jesus friendly music. Um, but you could arpeggiate again. So, um, for this voicing, I'll give you a demonstration, because swelling, you kind of got a handle on, I think, by now. I'll give you a demonstration here of um, arpeggiating with these new voicings here as a wave comping. there we're not trying to play jazz um, so you get the idea with that now we could take that same grip those same grips ish and play with it a bit more so um, another solid option um, for that is just also breaking your chords down smaller so power chords so we're just taking away essentially off of that mr. ring uh, ring finger and we're just stuck with E A, and then for the E chord E, B, and then this same position gets slid up instead, uh, you know, to this F sharp minor. So we've got F and Mr. C sharp here. Again, not being afraid to use that pinky there. And then for D, you could go back to this and then hit this, the thirds here, grouping of third, well, sixths, because, well, don't worry about that. You could hit these, um, or follow the pattern and go up to here, which is what I would probably do, is go to Mr. A here up on the 14th fret, uh, Mr. D on the 15th fret. So you've got, um, just for matters of simplicity, you've got 9 and 10, 9 and 12, 11 and 13, uh, or 11 and 14, excuse me, and then 14 and 15. And then what this allows you to do is also play with your timing a bit, your note length. Uh, when I'm doing this, I'm really thinking maybe coming in on beats one, two, and three with that, and then letting a note hang out there for, for beat four. Demonstration. Isn't that neat? So, um, yeah, there's three methods there. You can voice them here, voice them here. You know, the main crux of that is not being afraid to, one, play with your voice, uh, chord voicings, two, uh, play around with arpeggiation and, and note length, and three, when in doubt, swell it out, baby. Um, so I'll give you a demonstration of taking this to that next level of, you know, you don't have to just stick to one of those things, uh, one of those patterns or, or voicings. You can mix and match, um, and that would be um, a strong recommendation from your pal Zach here, that you, you mix and match. One, it keeps it from getting stale. Two, um, it, you know, it gives you a chance to experiment so you don't feel like you're, st you're, you're stuck. And three, it achieves the goal of complementing um, what everybody else is playing. So a demonstration of mixing all three of those. I'll start with the swells again, then I'll switch to the ar arpeggiation, and then I'll switch to breaking those up, those uh, power chords, essentially. Can you dig it? A one, a two, you know what to do. Sorry, got carried away there. Um, but yeah, so um, that would be um, just a, a quick example of a classic uh, worship uh, chord progression there and some uh, ways that you can comp it. Again, um, this is mainly just a kind of a, a jumping off point there. If you're kind of unsure, maybe you're a bit new to playing with mus other musicians or a bit new to just playing um, 
on a worship team. Um, this would be a good place to kind of just um, think outside the box, as it were, uh, to kind of um, give you a little bit of, of uh, something to experiment with, I guess, is really my goal here. And there we go. That's just a quick little rhythm guitar lesson from your pal Zach. Do feel free to check out my new album, The Way We Were, streaming at the link below. Um, appreciate all the support that you can give me, or anything you're willing to give me. Um, giving a bit more attention to YouTubes than I have in the past. Trying to find some different things to kind of help uh, my fellow brethren, my fellow travelers in the art of guitar. Can you dig it? And that's it for this video. Until next time, this is your pal Zach, signing off, reminding you that the only real monster you will encounter in your life watches you from the mirror every morning. Bread is bread, cheese is cheese, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.